Dark and Darker is one of the most popular games on Steam right now. How did it happen? How did some random indie game from a brand new company hit so hard? Allow me to explain. This video, in a way, will be expanding upon what I talked about in a previous video I uploaded called This Is What Makes A Game Good. So people keep calling this game Tarkov in a fantasy setting. I'm not a big fan of that title. It reminds me of the old Skyrim with guns line that Borderlands 2 ran with on all of its marketing. I think Tarkov is one of the best hardcore shooters out there today, no doubt, but I don't think it's one of the best extraction games. Extraction games have been on the rise with thanks to the popularity of games like Tarkov, but Tarkov may have only become so popular since they were the first ones to do it well on top of really diving into the hardcore shooter aspect. I cannot think of a game with shooting gameplay like that outside of Tarkov in the last four years. And now with other extraction shooters on the market, there's room for more players than the hardcore FPS type. I mean, I've been playing Hunt Showdown since 2018, which is a phenomenal extraction game. The game is set in the 1890s bayous, there are only 12 players in a match, and a match lasts about 45 minutes. Everyone is trying to complete the same objective, searching points of interest for clues until they find the bounty, the final boss if you will. You can leave at any time though at one of the extraction points, which everyone also shares. The weapons are all from that era, and the developers did a great job of balancing it. The only comparison I can make to Tarkov's gunplay here is the fact that if you shoot someone in the head, they will immediately die. Armor aside, of course, since there's no armor in Hunt. Another game that had the community excited but quickly fell off due to a widespread cheating problem was The Cycle Frontier. This game was set in a sci-fi setting that involved you completing tasks for three different corporations. The servers would be open for hours at a time, allowing a multitude of players to enter and leave the game throughout the match's duration. That's all I really have to say for that. Most recently, aside from Dark and Darker, we have Modern Warfare 2's DMZ mode. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a, I'm a slut for extraction games. The loot goblin inside me loves the rush of getting into a game and trying to escape with all my precious trinkets. The only reason I was going to buy Modern Warfare 2 was for this new DMZ mode. Then I found out it was going to be part of the free-to-play Warzone 2, and I saved $70. Thank God. DMZ doesn't do anything too excitingly new for the genre, but what it does do, it does pretty damn well. It seems to take the best from a lot of games and mix it in with a lot of your good old Call of Duty shoot 'em up spec ops action hero gameplay. Now, back to Dark and Darker. In its current state, there are not missions for you to complete or epic final bosses for you to kill to signify that you won. Winning this game is making it out alive. You don't have to kill other players or even find the best loot. And considering how popular the game is in its current state with its almost sandbox-like gameplay, I think that speaks very highly to its combat and progression systems. The combat in this game has been compared to Daggerfall. I haven't played much of Daggerfall, but from what I have played, I'm inclined to agree that it's like Daggerfall but with a modern twist. Fighting enemies and other players in this game is a lot of fun. It's approachable by new players and doesn't get as ridiculously insane as Chivalry did for higher skilled players. It's slow enough to be able to see what's going on, but not so slow that it's boring. It's very engaging combat. And when you get multiple parties involving wizards into a brawl, it's going to be like someone walked into a children's birthday party with a nuclear bomb. It starts off as pure chaos and ends in tragedy for everyone in the zip code. Fun in this game isn't derived from a destination. It's from the journey. It's about all the battles you fight, groups you gank, treasure you find, and the story of your characters. The rise and power of your wizard, starting from nothing, surviving and finding better and better gear, going deeper into the dungeons, and fighting increasingly difficult monsters, until eventually you meet your demise, whether it's from another player on level 1, or some much more difficult monster on a dungeon tier I have yet to reach. I said before that the most popular games that seem to come out of nowhere are the games that figured out how to do just a few things really well and build the rest of the game around it. Leave a comment below what you think of Darky Darker and the extraction genre. Click the end card to watch my other video on what makes games good. Thanks for watching. Stay brave.